Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about how I created time lapse and my process going from taking the pictures to editing it, editing all the pictures in Lightroom, bringing them into Premiere Pro, and then exporting a beautiful 4K time lapse video. Okay, so this is just my process. It's one that I've learned recently with using the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. I love the Adobe Creative Cloud. I have the whole suite, it's, it's fantastic, I love it. And I never used to subscribe to it. I used to always either, when I was doing my own work, I had you know just my version of Photoshop and Illustrator and just what I needed. And then working with companies I worked with in the past, I did have the whole Creative Cloud, but I never really used it the way I could. I was just using it for web design. So Photoshop, Illustrator, maybe video once in a while. But now that I've actually had the Creative Cloud for my own work, I am thrilled that I have it. I love it and I don't think I can ever go back. Um, that is because you can get Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Premiere Pro, Lightroom, all, all the apps you would need for creatives you can get with a single monthly subscription. Now, this isn't a video about Adobe Creative Cloud. I'm actually gonna be doing a video about that very soon just to give you my thoughts on it and if you should or shouldn't subscribe to the Creative Cloud and that's coming up much later. So today we're talking about how to do a shoot a time-lapse video. Now, there are a couple, of, well, not just a couple, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. One way that I think is pretty famous now, especially with the DSLR cameras out there, is to just shoot video. So you can actually set up your camera on a tripod, get time-lapse of whether you want it to be a landscape or whatever you want, shoot the video, and then bring it into Premiere Pro or whatever editing software you use, and speed up the video so you see the nice time-lapse of things going on. You can shoot for half an hour, you can shoot for an hour. Now, the one thing with this is that you're gonna use a lot of space for that huge file or files, so if your camera's gonna break it up into multiple files. And you might not have a 4K DSLR, so you're kind of limited to getting the 1080p size time lapse. But what I do, and what I think a lot of other photographers do, is use your DSLR to take pictures and then bring those pictures into your editing software and create your time lapse video. So this is my process. I'm not saying this is the absolute best way to go. This is just what I do. And from what I've learned, I'm um, using the Adobe Creative Cloud and its software. This is my process for creating a time lapse. So the one big advantage to taking pictures and using images instead of doing a video is not only do you save space, but you have a huge picture. I mean, DSLR cameras today, I use the Canon 80D. I love the 80D, it takes amazing pictures. You can have a really, really high res image, which then you can decide what resolution you wanna create your video. You can just create a 1080p video, or you can create a beautiful 4K video from those images and put it up to YouTube or any sort of stock photography sites you subscribe to. It's a great way to create your time lapse and get a beautiful 4K image. Another big advantage to using images is that you can use raw, well, you can shoot raw images. Shooting the raw image gives you big files, but it also gives you so much flexibility when it comes to editing. You can color grade and color style as much as you want, you have all that material stored in that raw image file. So you can really manipulate it and get it exactly the kind of feel that you want for your time lapse to have. You know, you can create beautiful cinematic uh, images, color grade as much as you want. It's fantastic. So here's a couple of time lapses I've shot recently with my Canon 80D camera, and you can see the results it gets. One of the big advantages of using the Canon 80D camera to shoot your time lapse is it has a built in intervalometer, which is a huge help. An intervalometer actually takes the pictures for you. You go and set how many pictures you want to take, whether it's unlimited or a certain number, 
at how many pictures, I what, how much time there is in between each picture, and it will automatically take the pictures for you. So you can just sit back, have a drink, have a coffee, read a book, and watch your camera do all the work. Now you can buy an external intervalometer. They are a little pricey, um, especially if you go with Canon, they're not cheap. Um, but that's the great thing with the ADD. And some, I'm not sure how many of the new DSLRs have them, but the ADD has it, I'm not sure about Nikons, I just use Canon stuff. Um, but it has a built-in intervalometer, which is great. You don't have to buy an extra piece of equipment to plug into your camera and to drag it around in your camera bag. It's built right in, it's simple to use. And I'm gonna actually gonna show another video very soon with how to use that intervalometer and how I set up the, the pictures and how I get the settings going. Okay, so the first step is to open up Lightroom and go to File, Import Photos and Video, and browse the space in, the, in, your, in your hard drive where you've stored all your images from your time lapse. And then, and import them into Lightroom, which will take a while, so you can just import and go get a copy. Uh, if you have a fast computer, it'll go a lot quicker, but depending on the speed of your computer, it might take a while and depending on how many photos you have. So I've already imported in my time-lapse photos. So what you can do now, so these are just the raw versions of each photo. You can see how many there are. You can see there's the different, all the different images. You can see how they're changing. So now I set up mine to take a picture every three seconds. Um, you can do it quicker. Um, if you want to get tons of detail in there, I find three is pretty good. Sometimes I do two every two seconds, um, but I'll go over that in the video I do next for the intervalometer and the Canon 80D. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is the great thing about going to Lightroom is you can bring your images in and then you can really get them to look the way you want. With that raw image, you can go in and tweak the colors, the exposure, everything. You can see you can really get the photo to appear the way you want it to. So I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit. That's usually the first thing I like to do. And then I usually like to play with the contrast, get a little more contrast in the image, just so you can see some of the areas down here, like the houses and the sky. And then highlights. I'm not sure how much highlights I wanna bring in. Maybe just a little bit. Shadows, not too much of the shadows, I think just a little bit of the shadows. You can bring in how much white you want. I wanna, I wanna see those clouds, so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. And the blacks, see how, how much you wanna show the blacks. You can really see, you can bring out all the things in the shadows or just make them nice and dark. I'm gonna keep it a little dark. Clarity, I like to bring up a little bit. You don't wanna to do too much, as you can see if you go too far, it makes the photo look really fake. So I just like to put a little bit on and then a little bit of vibrance. If you go too far, it can be too much. Just a little bit of vibrance, maybe a bit of saturation. And then I usually like to go back. With this one, I'm not gonna really touch the temperature too much. I might add a little bit of blue actually, just to maybe just a little, because the clouds look really cool with that bit of blue in there. Just a little bit. But yeah, now you can go back. I usually like to go back after I've gone through everything and really play with it again to get it exactly how I want it to be. Okay, so now here's the last photo in our list. You can see we go all the way back, select the first photo, go all the way to the end. And I, I hold down shift and click the last one to select all the images you've got. And what you can do is you can go to sync, select sync, and what this is going to do is it's going to synchronize all the settings from your first photo down through every single photo. So you don't have to go through and adjust everything. You can just do all your adjustments on the first photo and sync everything. So let's synchronize. Takes a little bit of time. Okay. Now you can see the photos showing up here. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Let it load in. So now you can see load the photo. There you can go. So now those settings have been synced across all of your images, which is great. It makes it really easy to color grade all the images at once. And you can see the sky getting darker. 
Now, the one thing you might want to do with that is if you really go from light to dark, which I kind of have here, you might want to go down and adjust the other images. Because you can see at this point, you might want to, I kind of like the way it's dark, um, but you could go in and then adjust, adjust another image, take a step and adjust it a little bit more to bring in a little more exposure or a little bit of you know contrast, how you want to do it. And then go back, hit that last image, and then sync those images and leave the, all the images before it the way they were. If you want to adjust it, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, but if you go from like a nighttime to daytime or daytime to nighttime, you might want to do that or just be a little more selective with which ones you color, correct? Uh, I'm just going to leave these the way they are. Um, but just be wary of that. Sometimes if you pick your first image, the settings you do for the first image might not be what you want on like the later images. So just keep that in mind. Let's see, I want to see how some of these images in the middle look. Let's see. Look at that. That's awesome. The sky was so cool that night in the sunset after a storm. I just pulled out my camera really quick, set up my tripod. And that was the great thing about the, the Canon 80D. Like, look at that. That's really cool. That's why I love the Canon 80D is because I don't have to set up an, an extra equipment. I just put on the <laughs> put on my tripod. Sorry, guys. Just put the, put the camera on my tripod, set it up, set the intervalometer and let it go. And it just takes great pictures. You can see it's, I think it's just going to look pretty. I'm curious to see how this time lapse turns out. Okay, so what we want to do next is export them. Go to File, Export, and you can pick your folder. Pick what you want them to do. What I usually do is I usually create another folder um, and call it graded or color graded or final, whatever you want to do. So keep your original photos in, like it's called the, this photo of time lapse. I keep them there. Then I create a second folder to have the exported images in, and you can choose name each what i know here's one thing make sure you keep the file names the same um as just the numbers like you see then you know image 7139 that's going to come into play later when we, when we bring it into adobe premiere pro so you want to keep those that ordered image number there and you'll find out why in two seconds so you can go down you can select your quality you can go jpeg quality bring it up if you want a really high image and then, yeah, and then export. That'll take a little while, maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. So take a break, come back, and your export should be done. Okay, so now I have Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud open, and this is where you're gonna go and bring in, let's see here, import. Okay, so now I'm in Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud, and this is where I'm gonna bring in all the images I just exported from Lightroom. So now here's my time-lapse folder with all the original images. If I go into the graded folder I created when I exported all of them, here's all our images here. So you can see all the images we have. And so what you want to do is select the first image. I'm going to bring up the options here. Now this, this, this is the trick here. This is why before I said, keep the file names the way they are. Actually, this needs to be ordered. Make sure it's ordered by name. So you have the first photo is your first image. There you go, so it's 7138, and then you got everything in order down below it. So this is why I said before to keep the file names the same. What we're gonna do here is just select the first image. Make sure this option down here, you can see, image sequence we're going to import this into premiere pro as an image sequence so you just select the one make sure that's selected and when you import you'll see here now it's put all those images together into one file which you can easily then drag onto your timeline and there you go now you can see this is now 12 seconds long and you don't have to go in and bring in each photo individually and put them all together a frame at a time that would take forever. So importing them into Premiere Pro as an image sequence from that folder saves you so much time and makes it so easy. So look, now you've got your time lapse here. Let's see how it goes. So now what you can do is, I mean, you can, I'm just gonna give it preview here and play it. 
Oh, actually, it looks pretty cool. I mean, you're not going to see the full quality image here, um, obviously, <laughs> until you export it. But it gives you an idea of sort of the time. I kind of like that timing, actually. What you can do now is you can really go in and you can adjust the timing of it. So you can say, you can go to speed, duration. You can make it faster, slower. This really depends on the style of time lapse that you've shot and how you want it to look. If you've shot like a video where you've taken like a really long time lapse where you're doing like sunrise to sunset, which you might do for like a cityscape or something, then you're gonna want it to be really fast. Like you're gonna wanna change that 100% up probably to, I don't know, 800 or a thousand percent and just play with it and see how fast you want it to be. Cause that'll really show how fast the clouds are gonna move how fast if you have cars or any people in the in the time lapse how fast you want them to move so it's all up to you what you can do you can slow it down if it's too fast you can slow down the, the speed to make it a little bit slower but i actually think i kind of like the speed this might be so what you want to do is right now is make sure you set your sequence settings to see right now they're set to the actual size of the images which are huge 6000 by 4000 so i'm going to change this to 4k and 4096 by 2160. Okay, now that's gonna set it to, that's the size I want it to be for exporting to Shutterstock, for instance. That's what they want, 40, 4096 by 2160 for their 4K setting. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna convert. Yes, I know it'd be undone. I'm gonna change the preview, but I'm changing the image down to be the actual resolution I want it to be because we don't want it to be this, the size of the image that's humongous. And also it's set to a different ratio. We want it to be that nice widescreen um, 4K resolution. So what you want to do now is, now that you can see it's zoomed in, so you can see like this is actually like the real size of the image here in the preview. So we go and you select your image. I'm just going to bring up, don't have my second screen, so you're going to have to overlap the controls here. But now you've got that selected go to your effect controls and for the scale set I usually set to about 70 I find works and see let's resize the image if I go to 68 yeah see that's a little bit too small so you can see the black bars on the side here so I'm gonna bring it back to 70% so it fills up both sides of the image and then what you can do is for the position I'm just gonna do this position you can really adjust where you want it to be so you can if you want to see more of the houses at the bottom of the image you can bring it down bring it up or if you want to see more of the sky it's all up to you how you want to do it i think i want to see a little bit of the homes because i like seeing the tree line but not too much because i really want to see those colors in the sky so it meets a little bit more so i can see the rooftop i think that's probably pretty good so yeah, just you can adjust that however you'd like. It's up to you. And then once you've got that set, I'm just gonna drag this out of here. Once you've got that set, you can go File, Export, Export Media. Now I've got this set right here. I'm gonna export an H.264. If you want really high imagery, you're gonna wanna go to like, what I use for exporting my stock is going to QuickTime. Then I have settings for video blocks or for Shutterstock, which really matches their submission guidelines because they want a really, really high res pro quality video. So it's going to export it as a .mov file, really high quality, and that's what they want. So as you can see, the output is going to be 4096 by 2160, 29.97 frames per second. Now what you could do is you go and adjust it. I think I might actually go back and adjust this one and make it 24 frames a second, but it's up to you. You can keep it at 29. 24 is the standard, well, 23.976 is the standard for cinematic Hollywood style. That's their frames per second. 29.97 is more like the video look, a little bit, a little more motion. It's good for sports and things like that. It's really up to you how you want to do it. Um, I like the cinematic look, so I usually go for, I usually shoot all my video in 24 frames per second, but it's really up to you. So for this one, I'm just gonna keep it at 29.97. And there you go. You can export it. You've got your export settings. As I said, I'll do I'm gonna do another video on just on export settings coming up. Because a lot of things you can do if, if you're doing videos for YouTube, you want to compress it. You don't want 
a humongous image like this one. This is going full res. Um, but if you go into the H.264 settings for YouTube, Premiere Pro already has built-in YouTube export settings. I'll show you here. Uh, let's go to H.264. You can just match the size. I'm just going to keep your proper image size for you. And you just want to make sure that these settings are the same for both your output and your source. Make sure you're getting the best quality. Um, but you can go to a preset and you can pick, see I've got some presets set here, 4K, things for YouTube, for gaming, I have a different setting. But you can really go and pick, I think they've got a YouTube, let's see, yeah, here we go. YouTube 4K, YouTube 1080p. So you can do, just do a preset or you can go in and tweak it the way you want. I always go in and tweak my, and create my own presets to make sure I'm getting a really high quality video, but I will do a, comp a whole other video on that. That's a whole other conversation. So for now, <laughs> I'm just gonna use, hold on, I'm gonna go back to my quick time, because this one I wanna get the really high res version of it, and I'm gonna go to my stock photography setting, which keeps up the ProRes and make sure I've got maximum render quality selected, render at maximum depth, make sure that's all good and then export it. And it's gonna take, depending on the speed of your computer, maybe 10 minutes, maybe half an hour, maybe an hour. It's really up to the computer. But now you can export your time-lapse and then we'll check out the video when it's all done. Okay, so you can see the results you can get with the Canon 80G. It's a really good camera. It's not the super high-end camera. It's just around $1,000, $1,200. Um, but it's great if you're a beginner to intermediate photographer or videographer. You wanna learn, I'm learning on it. It's what I use every day now, and it's really, really good. And for the money, I think you get the most bang for your buck, especially for video and shooting time lapses like this with the built-in intervalometer. It's a big bonus. That's just my process on how I create my time-lapse videos. Let me know in the comments how you do it. If you have a better way of doing it, I would love to know because I love learning all new, new kinds of stuff. And I'm not saying this is the best way, the, 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 you know, the ultimate way to go. This is just my work process right now. So I'm, I'd love to hear your ideas and comments as well on how you do it so I can improve how I'm, I do my images. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. We are gonna do another video for color grading, go into a little more detail there. I know I just kind of touched on it today. I'm gonna go into how I color grade my videos and also into how to set up the Canon 80D intervalometer to take time lapse videos. I'm gonna do one for that as well. So check back, subscribe. I love hearing from you guys in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys.